Returning to our top story today, the U.S. added a staggering 353,000 jobs last month. A CNN poll still shows that people are unhappy with the economy. And only 26 percent of people think they're starting to recover from the last few years. So joining me now is the head of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisers. It is Jared Bernstein, who's at the White House. Sir, look, I mean, the numbers are good. Just about everybody agrees. The job numbers are good, but you're not getting the credit for them yet. Well, in fact, if you look at some of the most recent uh, indicators of consumer confidence or consumer sentiment, they're actually moving in the right direction uh, with some speed. So this morning, we learned that one uh, closely watched measure of sentiment was up 13 percent in January, and that's after an equally large bump in uh, December. So it's up 30 percent over the last two months. Uh, the consumer confidence in, uh, measure also got a nice pop. Now, what's happening here is that the benefits of a very strong labor market, as we learned this morning, along with easing inflationary pressures, are raising the pay, the real pay, the real buying power of working families. And they're starting to feel that that's beginning to show up in some of these indicators. That phrase vibe session that you'll be familiar with, where people are sort of saying, we don't feel it. The vibe doesn't feel good. Um, can you turn that round in 10 months? Well, I think that, that my point is that we're already seeing some movement in that direction. So, right. uh, I, that, look, if I, I'm not going to uh, declare whether a vibe session has begun or is over or is in the middle or what. That's all, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, I believe that phrase comes off of TikTok. What I'm telling you is that if you look at the very closely watched measures of consumer sentiment, we are starting to see the gap between the real indicators of the economy's strength, whether it's job growth, easing inflation, lower costs in some key areas, including gas, eggs, right. milk, TV, airfares, uh, and, uh, and, and rising real pay. That gap is starting to close, and somewhat reliably so. It's not just a, a week or two. It's a few months within that gap is coming, is coming down some. Uh, and, and that's exactly what you would expect if these benefits, these gains, are reaching uh, so American families. The Fed yesterday in its statement, uh, and indeed the, the chair in his press conference, it was interesting because he, he's, you know, th these strong numbers of which today's jobs numbers is greater uh, grist to the mill, does suggest cuts in interest rates will be slower and more uh, and further out than perhaps you'd have hoped. Well, we do not comment on a Federal Reserve interest rate policy. We consider it extremely important for them to be independent. We know how uh, economies have been just deeply damaged when that independence is compromised. What we have seen already is some key interest rates coming down a bit. Uh, mortgage rates, of course, were uh, peaked at around 8 percent and were last seen a little bit below 7. My expectation is that that rate will continue to come down uh, some this year. Uh, but what really matters to working households right now is uh, are their incomes rising? Are their incomes, are their wages, are they beating inflation? We learned this morning that wages were up strongly in January. We don't have inflation yet for January, but we know for the past nine or ten months, wages, incomes have been outpacing inflation, and that's giving families some much needed breathing room. Add that to the measures this president has taken to directly lower costs, health care, prescription drugs, right. the cost of health coverage, clean energy. Energy, and you see some real breathing room for American households. If we look at the totality of the U.S. economy, it is actually in an extremely robust, strong position. There's one thing that happens that, that you know, the, the, the relationship with Congress and the, the ability to get things done between And I'm thinking about things like aid to Ukraine or tightening sanctions on Russia, uh, which, of course, the entire range of things that the administration would like to do. How difficult do you think that's going to be, turning the economic screws? Well, uh, in one way, I, uh, I'm fortunate in that I do economics, not politics. But of course, you know, here we are in Washington. I work for the White House, so uh, political economics is, of course, uh, my purview. I think the way to think about this, uh, Richard, is that 
We've been talking about what a strong economy this is. We've been talking about the importance on building the progress that we made, progress in easing prices. We have a job market that is just as tight as as strong as it's ever been. The last thing we'd want to do right. is to kick the ball in our own goal, to, to, to hurt the progress we're making with partisan squabbling. So uh, this president has long believed that we ought to be able to get together on a bipartisan basis and uh, uh, achieve many of the priorities right. you just took us through. I'm grateful to you, sir. Friday afternoon, thank you for taking time to talk to us and have a lovely weekend. You too.